Hello YouTube and welcome back you one and all to the zone where today ladies and gentlemen I sort of wanted to take this opportunity to talk about something that's a, a few, a, quite a, about a year or so old but one I think that's kind of a little bit relevant because it's I'm just gonna like play the video uh, for, from the beginning and literally just give you an idea the video is a message to everyone and the haters and bullies now I can't exactly pray tell exactly what this message is supposed to be but apparently this is something that was concerning in fact actually uh, it sort of concerns the dimensional merge but what's very very interesting is that uh, like over the past couple of months Chris is, uh, if you've ever visited his Twitter, you'll notice that his uh, belief now in the Dimensional Merge is becoming increasingly fractious at this point. There's very, very little that would co would convince anyone. Nobody is, ba well, basically the Dimensional Merge, even if Chris still believes it's ongoing anyway, everybody, if anyone whatsoever believes in it, it's... All hope has pretty much gone out the window as far as that's concerned. Now, I mentioned that because... C keep that in mind, actually, the things about the Dimensional Merge. Because, considering the progress about where it's happening today is one thing to be concerned. But, there's actually quite a number of things I wanted to talk about when it comes to, like, Chris. And, again, response to uh, cyber bullies and that. But, again, if anybody who's been watching my progress on the Gino Samu documentaries, you know that... It's not entirely the, the the trolls' fault. Some things absolutely are. Some things aren't pretty on that, uh, to say the least. So, let's just get started. Hello, everybody. Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again in the utility room. And this time I got a whopper of a speech for everybody that needs to be well heard and listened and I did put it on Twitter. I'm, I'm gonna. I think he was like uh, 36 years old when he wrote this, which is about just a, just a, under two years ago. But what I kind of like, it's it's really something again. If you watch uh, any videos of when Chris was like uh, in his late 20s, uh, when he was the the way he was then, and compared to where he is now, I don't particularly know. I I guess you could say he sort of like learned from the the mistake of trying to like appear overly aggressive on camera. Because, to be fair, most some of the videos he does right now, are, he's a little bit calmer. But that's not necessarily to me. Not that doesn't necessarily means that he knows absolutely where he went wrong. I think. Anyway. Read it. It came from heart, soul, mind. My mind, my heart, my soul. And if you think I could just remember it all from just having written it once. He says that, even though he's probably going to be reading it off a phone. So, yeah, also the thing about him writing things in one go, this is not new if anybody's read even so much as one page out of Sonichu. And that's the least of the worries in this. Believe me. Sheesh. What planet are you living on? Uh, planet Earth, Chris. Come back to it. Hello, everyone. I've just talked with the War Rebels and Haters in Dimension C197, and I'm going to share the statement with the Rebels and Haters here in this world and Dimension. For those who don't know, this war is between the, super, the CPU's console patron units, deities, heroes, superheroes, and the villains and supervillains who are acting against the prophecies and destinies that all have been happening on you know I, I, you know what's <laughs> I'm sorry I, I don't really want to cut the uh, the bullshit umbilical cord just yet but I think I'm gonna have to let's think about this ladies and gentlemen uh, if there's meant to be some kind of war going on in this uh, why doesn't Chris not put this into Solitude 13 or something like that or Solitude 14 because I know he doesn't technically want to call it Solitude 13 for whatever reason um so anyway, the, the point about that is that how long has it been since we last uh, since Chris actually last made a, an, an issue for the comic? I'm mentioning that because it's going to be an issue. Why not just put this stuff in the comic? Why does he need to like uh, give away uh, potential story plot ideas right now? 
Especially because, you know, he's supposed to be a chronicler of what's going on. So why doesn't he just do that? Is it just because he has absolutely no clue? Or if if, if, there's, if the law of solitude is confusing enough to anybody, then Chris just randomly taking things off Twitter and making them canon in his solitude universe. Yeah, that's that's the type of person. Again, if you're, if you're very unfamiliar as to who Chris Chan is, maybe this is the wrong video to start off on, but... Trust me, I, I, I don't have time to exactly go into all the problems right now because the, the comics is technically the last part about Chris. I, actually, I may just cover that in maybe the next few videos, just do it about the comics themselves. Are happening and shall happening, be, shall be happening. In the progress between this Earth of 1218 and our Earth of C197, I personally am not one for warfare. I'm literally just going to let that out there because uh, I'll, I'll let you decide whether you really think about that. Uh, despite the death threats, despite the, uh, I don't want to call it the sexual harassment, but it was one step away from sexual harassment. Uh, okay, so death threats, the uh, the sexual harassment, and the, the, uh, the kangaroo court uh, incident. Yeah, Chris, I... Michael Snyder, the GameStop employee, yeah, Chris, you, you can't really say you're not against warfare or you're not, you know, pro-violence. Chris is very, very pro-violence. He, he, he may say he not, he's not, but I reckon if he had, if he had, if, if he had the opportunity, he probably would. Because what's to say he won't uh, mace somebody else uh, for the exact same thing? And bearing in mind, that incident, the uh, the Sonic Boom Gate, as I call it, that had absolutely no nothing to do with any trolls whatsoever. Everything that happened in that saga was entirely Chris's fault. Nobody did anything wrong in that incident, in that story. And I don't instigate or condone such. Again, you know, he says he doesn't instigate or condone such. But I'll, I'll do this again. Watch, th watch this. And I don't instigate... Or condone such. You see how long it took for him to say that? And I don't instigate or condone such. I don't... I, 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 it just... I don't know about you, but he does not really sound convinced, does he? Maybe it's just me, but... I, I think he could have maybe done another take on that. Because he could, have, he could have followed up with saying that... I used to think like that. And unfortunately... I did used to think like that, and to that I apologize, but I'm a changed, I'm a, I'm a reformed person. You know, maybe not many people would have believed he was reformed, but if he tried to, to show that, whatever, uh, maybe he would have had a better job at convincing people. But the villains still will do what they will, because that is their agenda. And they refuse to change, but we... A bit like you, Chris. We the heroes and deities do what we all must to stand and fight to defend the good of both worlds and dimensions. Like all heroes before us, we defend and fight for all of you. For y'all's freedom, safety, good health, and... We will not stop defending. I'm going to take this back another five seconds because look, watch his eye. I'm not going to say anything. Just watch his eye. Just watch his eye contact. Darting bet between the phone and the camera. He has absolutely, like, he didn't rehearse this. He ripped the, he may, writing things out in one go is something, but you've got to, you know, rehearse what you're going to say. You can't just do this on, the, you can't really just do this on the fly. And also, again, this frame in particular Chris, how old was Chris meant to be in this? 36. To be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say he looks 46 in this. And to be honest, with the state of his clothes, you can see the tears on like the uh, the the cuffs on his uh, sweater here, and uh, it and also the the fingerless gloves. I would say. I would say I don't even know where he's going to be when he's 46. I don't know. 
And that's another thing that like, I've always heard people say about is that they have no idea what on earth will happen to Chris in five years' time, ten years' time, next year. That people just straight up do not know. I'd because listen, you want if you want my honest opinion, just before we get any go any further, I reckon the shit all the things that have happened with Chris, I reckon things will be like this for I'm gonna say it right now, I'm gonna say three months. I reckon before long there will something will happen in three months time. I have absolutely no idea what. But I feel as if like something will happen that will turn Chris's world upside down again. And you're going to be seeing incre less and less and less of Chris. Whether through the influence of Rocky Shoemaker. Although, to be honest, maybe the lack of incidents so will probably be down to the police. It might be down to uh, a me to uh, therapy. There could be, there could, goodness knows what exactly is going to be happening. Uh, like, how many more cats could be brought into this house in the next three months? Who knows? I'm just going to say it right now, ladies and gentlemen, just in case I didn't say it before. I don't think Chris is going to reach 40. I just straight up don't. With all this with all this stuff that's happened in his life, and he he just has almost nowhere else to go. I don't know where on earth he can he can go after after all this is said and done. And we will not stop defending because we really do care for all of you, our peoples, individuals, OCs, or original characters, creatures big and small, and everyone else who loves and lives freely. In the end. Our two dimensions shall be... You know what What Chris should have done there? He should have said that he loves even the people, even the haters. He he should have said something like, I even love my enemies. Because he he loves his enemies because, you know what, he loves, he loves everyone equally through all their flaws. That's, again, why Chris is not a deity. He is not a goddess. He is not a god of any kind. God is actually more merciful and more forgiving than you could actually think. And Chris is not that forgiving from what, from what I could work out. We merge and we will all be able to live fully tangible with each other and everyone as soon as possible. As it has been destined and prophesied. Now to all of you haters and hazers who try to take us... The heroes and I, a CPU and a Sanchu, down with the crass and unnecessary remarks, commentary, and outdated dirt footage and crap. I look down upon all of you, and I feel shame and sorrow. Shame and sorrow for what, Chris? You, Chris, you have almost no shame whatsoever. Outdated footage like uh, the pepper spray incident hitting Michael Snyder, uh, all of the. I don't. I don't get it, Chris. I don't know what. I don't know exactly who gave Chris the permission to start saying that he feels embarrassed and uh, sickened by whatever people have done compared to what he's done. I just. I don't understand. I mean, comment the commentator commentary as well. Is he is he talking about people who record and people who talk about Chris online? Who aren't, you know, harassing him or anything like that? Well, it's probably maybe it's maybe it's for that. It's a good thing that he doesn't watch my videos because I don't particularly think I half like what I consider myself almost like kind of like halfway between Gibby and Dylan Thomas. Because on one hand, yes, I am rather critical and I do have to like point out exactly the differences between the right and the wrong and have to like lay down the law sometimes when it comes to some of the things that Chris does. On the other hand, however, I can I have to try and empathize and try and work out exactly what could be going through Chris's mind. And again, it's not like Chris is the only is not the only non innocent in all this. I try my best because I'm not really I, I'm gonna so I'm gonna like to make a little bit more a video about that in the future as well because there's a lot of things I want to, like, go into when I want to stop talking about Chris at long last, just before I leave. So, 
you might want to look forward to that. Anyway, I'm gonna let's just, just try and. That's been it's been like nearly twenty minutes. We I'm just gonna like continue playing this. We're not even a third way the through this. For all of you, in your own respective lack of self confidence and feeling small. Feel like feeling like you all have to resort to thrusting hatred, to make an emotional high for yourselves. Like a really bad drug that just eats away at your soul and being. And I do understand and recognize how all of you thinking I am not making progress in myself and around me. But I am making progress in myself. I'm developing my brain further. I'm getting stronger in my superpowers and everything. You all just do not understand. Because y'all closed yourselves off to not only the truth and real facts that are just sitting and standing right there in front of y'all, invisible to others, coming straight from C-197 as it continues to merge with 1218 here and denying yourselves of the freedom to love and appreciate the creations of others and maybe even yourselves your own creations i don't appreciate my own creations also this the things i i can see the thing right now ladies and gentlemen i can see what's standing just right in the corner of my room it's called patience and it's very slowly running out because i don't even know what the point of this message is is that i'm gonna literally like just take this back 30 seconds i it, it was so I have no idea what he's trying to say. So let's let's see if we can try this again. Just do not understand. Yeah, we got that. Because y'all closed yourselves off to not only the truth and real facts that are just sitting and standing right there in front of y'all, invisible to others, coming straight from C-197 as it continues to merge with 1218 here and denying yourselves of the freedom to love and appreciate the creations of others, and maybe even yourselves, your own creations. And you force this handicap of yourselves unto others with hatred upon myself and everyone else who is creative and open-hearted and open-minded, fully able to see, appreciate, and recognize because y'all are jealous. Y'all are jealous of our true sight. All you have to do is just open yourselves up and you will have your true sight fully and for real. Because you all are jealous, jealous of our true sight, just open up. Chris thinks he freaking has this in the bag, doesn't he? He, feel, he thinks it's as simple as that. No, Chris, he is the reason why. The reason why is that, you know what, in this modern day, listen... If you are going to try and target Chris to, for, you know, harassment or try and be like a troll and get in the quickie forms and all that. First off, it's it's not like it's not that's not going to happen. Just don't get ahead of yourselves in that regard. You'll you'll stick out like a sore thumb. Trust me, it is absolutely you. People will people will catch on even if you're trying to do some good possibly in Chris's life. People will be very dubious as to what exactly it's going to help. Other people have tried to help him before. But we all know uh, what happened to them. Now, the other thing I kind of like wanted to mention is that... Uh, he's saying apparently we're jealous. Jealous of what exactly? What is it about Chris's uh, situation? His, his life that I've got to be jealous of? I've got to be jealous that I haven't worked in 20 years? Uh, is that is that something I've got to be jealous about? Uh, have I got to be jealous about the fact that uh, his he's lived he's lived in the same house for well over was it like nearly all of his life or something like that? Is have I got to be jealous of something like that? Have I got to be jealous of the fact that his room is completely cluttered with junk that he managed to set on fire six years ago? Is that something to be jealous about? Have I got to be jealous about the fact that uh, his uh, comic book is literally just? stolen property from Sega and Nintendo. Is that something I've got to be jealous about? His made-up uh, superpowers. Is that something I've got to be jealous about? The fact that uh, 
the, it, the fact that he was sexually harassing people at uh, conventions and the fact that uh, he insults people who makes art of him and the fact that uh, he does not say thank you when somebody sends him a brand new Nintendo Switch. Is that something I've got to be jealous about? Or what about all the uh, the cats and all the uh, animals he's let into his house that uh, he's either poorly neglected like Clover and Snoopy or some that have just died in his care when they should have just been in the wild because they weren't fully off their mother, i.e. Patches and, and uh, Posey. Is that something I've got to be jealous about? Chris, I don't want to be rude or anything, but I'm not jealous because there's nothing to be jealous of. Have I got to be jealous of the fact that you're literally living in a squat because your life literally is just a squat? It's just a collection of... It, it's it's just it's just basically a manifestation. This, this house is almost a manifestation of literally all of his ideas. Everything just spewing out onto the lawn and literally infecting the world around it. Because if Chris seems to think that... I, I am in any which way jealous, or maybe used not at home. If you think, if you think Chris is in any way, if you feel in any way jealous of Chris, thumbs down this video right now and don't listen to my opinions. But for everyone else who does not feel jealous because they've not lived the life that Chris has, please let me know. Because I'm 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 dying to figure out if there's anybody out there actually jealous of of Chris's life. I'm very, very interested to know. Because I'm not. I don't think anyone would convince me otherwise that Chris's life is any better and that I should be jealous whatsoever. But we all resist your hatred. Granted, there are those who are still learning to resist the hatred. But they are coping and doing their best on that. That made no sense, but okay. And we all shall... S continue to resist the hatred from all of you. So, here's the thing. Haters and bullies. Why can't y'all just find something else that is actually popularly disliked and hated, like Putin and his... And again, going back to, you know, actually harassing other people, because we haven't heard Chris do that before. Regardless of the rights and wrongs of the people he's actually designed to talk about, like Putin and probably Trump, you know, again, I'll say it again. Despite the things that uh, they say about Trump and all that, but you know what? There are ways of dealing with, uh, you know, with uh, with with uh, with things like what Trump and uh, Putin and the world leaders of the world of this world are doing. There's a certain tact and a certain amount of dignity you have in response. Chris is like, <sighs> there's another really big thing I wanted to make a thing of, but. Uh, it, it was something to do between uh, Martin Luther King and uh, Malcolm X. But I think I'll leave that for another video as well. His recent spiel against the LGBTQ in Russia. Or Donald Trump's freaking wall. Ugh. Really taking money out of every single person's pockets. Is he tricking about the people? No, he's not thinking about us. He's thinking about himself. Taking money out of everybody else's pockets. First off, Chris, you don't work. Second, it's called taxes. It's... I've talked about this before when uh, Chris was doing his uh, thing about politics, but if you, if, you, if you think for even one moment this is uh, the tactful approach to this, then, well, I'll just... I'll, I'll say this very, very politely. No, it isn't. This is not about Donald Trump. He had to scroll down. It's about all of you, the haters, and how y'all need to... It's about all of you, the haters. So, apparently, Chris is almost self-admitting that there aren't actually any people who believe in his uh, delusions. That's... Inadvertently, he did that. Not me. Or you. Find something else to focus your hatred upon. And I will recommend this, as I did to the haters and rebels in C197 earlier today. Go punch a... Reinforced bag of sand. Even those of y'all who are stuck to a chair in perma epic fail, y'all can still reach out and punch a bag. Simple! You're on a chair, just punch.
punch. I would say that's once again Chris administrating uh, violence. But at this point... Epic fail. Y'all can still reach out and punch a bag. Oh, I'm so... Simple! You're in a chair, just punch! About as much... That's about as much exercise Chris has actually gone done in about... Uh, three years? Something like that? Yeah. <sighs> Still reach out and punch a bag of sand that you ordered from Lowe's or something. And do not harass or target the creative types, the heroes and superheroes, the deities, and all of the innocent peoples in between and everywhere. Or that, go that goes for you too, Chris, but apparently from the things I heard about SNT, no, you didn't do that. But we'll talk about that later. For myself. With any of that hatred y'all have. And to borrow Dr. King's intro line. I have a dream. Oh boy. He's going to talk about friggin' uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. isn't he? Right. Uh, first. Yeah. Well first off let's start with that. First off he was called Dr. Martin Luther King, Luther King Jr. Not just Dr. King. It's. Kind of important you have to get that very, very small detail down first. But let's move on to the next big detail. Uh, I have a... He, he said... what he, I think what Chris was trying to say is that to borrow the uh, the title of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, poem, I have a dream. But uh, again, technically it wasn't... I have a dream technically wasn't... I don't really want to call it a poem. It was... I don't know. Also... I have a dream is not the intro line to I have a dream. Now, guys, when I studied uh, the uh, the poem, the uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it a poem anyway. Uh, when I studied the poem uh, I have a dream by Martin Luther King back in uh, late 2010, the beginning of the poem is, I think it it goes along the lines of something like, uh, I am pleased to I'm pleased to gather everyone today for what will go down as the most remarkable event in uh, our country's history. In fact, I'll tell you what, just to make sure. Full speech. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Gov Archives. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Okay, that... That makes sense. Copyright 19, 1963. Wow. I just I just want to like make sure I kind of like got that right because you know what? For someone who is holding up a phone and has access to the internet, you would have thought just a very simple, you know, uh, a fact check about uh, what you're trying to reference makes sense. Because remember, he made this in, what was this, like the beginning of 2019. You can't tell me that he, aside from, you know, the internet, you can't tell me in that mount, that piles of junk, he didn't ac have access to a book about uh, Martin Luther King or anything like that. In fact, I, I, I don't really, again, I don't really expect to uh, be surprised if Chris didn't, but I'm only trying to, like, hope in some way that... Chris tried to, you know, take himself seriously by showing he took some time out to, you know, re do some re extensive research, but no, I I'm guessing he didn't. A dream where everyone is kind to each other, regardless of race, religion, color of skin, sexual identity and or orientation, and kindness from those who hate it before. Finding their own happiness and being kind with hatred and bullying put aside in worn out punching sandbags. Is 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 Chris taking the piss? He he's gotta be taking the piss because Really Really He managed to take You know what how how much how long have we been here? Twenty nine minutes? Uh you know, I'll tell you what, we'll get through this and then I'll actually go through I Have a Dream because because I Have a Dream is an actual 
I want to say a very, very important political document in the US history. This is not important. Nothing about this has been important. It's just showing that Chris is going to refuse any sort of advice, grounds on whatever anybody has to say. Irregardless if they're in the right or wrong or not. Chris will refuse to listen. That's his antidote for the fact that whatever, people are unconvinced about the dimensional merge or whatever the hell's going on. Those who I had nightmares of looking to trash my home's yard with running tires and weapons against my person in needless angst, having to defend myself with my own wit and speed. Now, coming to my front door, standing by the walkway with sincere, apologetic, and kind looks on their faces, and not weapons, but gifts of kindness, love, and sincere smiles. And I'm forgiving of those who used to hate, having realized the folly and wrong of their own ways. I literally actually did have those nightmares. And more recently, the kinder apologetic repentance and remorse of those people standing in front of our house in those dreams. I did. It hurt then, but it's nice to see kindness from everyone. And I appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you all so much. Everyone, have a great and safe day. And know that we, all of us, are working together to keep each and every day great and safe for all of you. Body, mind, spirit. And superpowers. Well, that that felt like it went on forever. So, actually, you know what? Maybe, listen, if I was to believe Chris did forgive the people that uh, wronged him in the past, the, uh, like, blue spike and all that, however, this doesn't, like, bring into question the things about uh, the calling out saga or anything else, so... You want to almost throw Chris's idea about, you know, actual remorse pretty much out the window at that point. Because this isn't even the first time where he said he forgave people. And, uh... But what's quite interesting is that, do you think there's been anybody out there who's actually forgiven Chris for the things he's done? Because I don't particularly think Michael Snyder is very forgiving of Chris. I don't think, uh... The people he touched and tried to kiss are that forgiving of Chris. I think the people who have Asperger's and the things that Chris has said to people who have Asperger's don't think very kindly of Chris. And I don't think there's going to be much that's going to change that anyway. I don't think people who are equ who are equally divided on the, the, the very sensitive subject of US politics are that grateful for Chris's opinions. For someone who knows nothing and thinks the only uh, suitable way of uh, to Trump's victory is to say that he's going to die because some strange belief that men die before women I don't but I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't and will probably not agree on when it comes to Chris but a few well, a few more things I kind of like want to say and then I'll go to uh, I have a dream what is what was even the point in this video anyway what was his motive for wanting to say all this stuff do you think like he wanted to uh say straight up that he forgave others but then he just straight up said that uh, others were jealous but he for so basically is chris trying to say is that he forgives other people for being jealous of him but i'll put it to you again what exactly have i got to be jealous about i don't get it so you'll get in fact i think there's only one person who can actually say for certain what the point of this whole thing was unfortunately that's chris and i don't even think his response is going to be any less confusing than it would have already been anyway. Uh, January 21st, 2019, when this was made. Okay, that's uh, something. Anyway, so uh, just for the benefit of everybody at home, I'm actually going to do the uh, the right thing and, uh, what's this? and actually read out I Have a Dream to show that, well, even by just reading the thing, I would probably have known a little bit more about this than uh, 
Chris, more research than Chris probably ever did uh, when it came to this. So, uh, speech by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. at the March on Washington. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the, um, the, Amnis the Amnipotation uh, Proclamation. This momentous decree is a great beacon of light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still badly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of, the, of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. So we've come here today to dramatise a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a cheque. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signed a uh, promise, promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this uh, promissory note in insofar as the citizens of colour are concerned. Instead of honouring the sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad cheque, a cheque which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the Bank of Justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we've come to cash this cheque, a cheque that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of this fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranqu tranquilizing drug of grandeurism. Now is the time to make the real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's uh, legitimate discontinent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will be content will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America, until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright days of rate of justice emerge. And that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the worn threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the higher plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative prote protests to uh, degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. The marvellous new uh, mil militancy which uh, has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to distrust all white people, for many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realise that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. 
They have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their adulthood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating, for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro in uh, Mississippi cannot vote and the Negro in New York believes he has nothing which, for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down the waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I am not unmindful that some of you have come here out of the great trials and tribulation. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas which your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Continuing to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities. Knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, though even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning my country, tis for thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, for every mountainside let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. 
So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty valley mountains of New York. Let freedom ring out from the heightening Alhegenous cities of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring out from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the uh, curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lookout mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring out from every hill and molehill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every city and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, Free at last, free at last, great God Almighty, we are free at last. Copyright 1963, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. I do that, ladies and gentlemen. And no doubt there probably might there may be some critics out there who will be saying that I shouldn't be saying the word Negro at all. Even in the context of me trying to do, of, of me literally reciting I Have a Dream. I did that because... I straight up, you know what I've wanted to do, ladies and gentlemen? I kind of wanted to imagine what it would have been like for Martin Luther King to be in Washington at that moment, reciting to an audience, I have a dream. I wanted to know exactly what it felt like to be in his position. Because this is where you have to realise, and maybe this is something that Chris should probably have like picked up upon. Maybe it was something that maybe got him to encourage to do something a bit like this. If he was, he, 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 because he doesn't realize that actually a lot of people do listen to him and then will do whatever the hell they want as a result. I probably, I do the exact same thing myself. However, as opposed to spending my time literally trying to message or say all of these things about Chris to himself, I do this because I want to record and just learn about this uh, one human being out of millions on this planet. Because it is only when you come into contact with others do you truly begin to realise who you are, what your morals are, and where do you stand in this world. And when you, do some, and when you read out stuff like uh, I Have a Dream, you begin to realise, you know what? Maybe, just maybe... I'm a lot better than I think I am because men like him have been on this planet before. And at the end of the day, Martin Luther King was just a man, but he was a great man. But anyone can be a great man. It is simply a matter of being great, doing something that no one would have ever have dreamed of doing it before. That's what I think Chris is missing. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please make sure to leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys thought of Chris Chan's message of whatever the hell it was. Please also make sure to also like and subscribe to get daily notifications when my videos come out. And I hope to so love you guys again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye for now.